the start. We'll get another minute. Let people okay. join in. Hope everyone uh, that's joined in so far is doing well. Uh, throw a comment or emoji in the chat. Make sure that you guys can hear us okay. I would trust Jose's judgment usually, but um, <laughs> feel free to chime in. And for those of you that might be joining in new or have participated in our previous webinars, uh, again, appreciate you coming back. And if you weren't on last week's webinar, I'm going to post a link uh, for the full video. Uh, we talked about uh, Ascension Health uh, recently uh, uh, was dealing with some ransomware stuff, and we sort of covered that topic. And for those that are interested in looking into it, uh, please check out this video. Jess, I see that you made it. Nice. I'm going to send you a promotion. Wi-Fi is hit or miss right now. Hey, that's the kind of day we're having. That's all right. Hey, if it makes you feel better, Jess, Jose is using his guest laptop <laughs> because he was having an internet issue too. I just uh, sent you a promotion uh, invitation, Jess. Shelly <laughs> Shelly said university Wi-Fi is not much better. <laughs> now I I do I am gonna say this as <laughs> much as we complain about Wi-Fi, I do remember the times when we used to have, come on little man run, come on right. little man run. I can't make a phone call if I'm trying to get on the internet. Come on little man run. <laughs> Everybody had those CDs of AOL online for free. Right. Oh, man. I don't know how we got anything done. I don't. I know. I'm having flashbacks. Of, I went to a, a community college my first two years, and I remember um, I had a just a crap laptop. The internet was always bad. I always, I'd always i have to go to the library there to get a good reception. <laughs> I just – I don't know how, we, how anything got done. I, I really know. don't. Like, I mean – it is it is wild now how much how much data and everything <laughs> i had a cell phone in the back i'll tell you what you know if i really am having uh issues connecting to the internet i do use my hotspot on my phone and that does that does yes. work <laughs> yes. yeah. that is uh that is a part of ray's contingency plan <laughs> Great, man. My contingency plan was even set up to where I was going to use the Wi-Fi for, to hit the cell phone and the cell phone was going to hotspot to see if the laptop would connect and it still wouldn't oh, connect. Half the time it wasn't even seeing, it wasn't even registering any network. So I think it's a hardware issue. That's just wild. That's how it goes, Jose. <laughs> Two, years old. Two years old. Like almost to the day. Um, that is why insane. This is why I don't spend much money on devices because they crap out in two years. No, it's so true now. Like, uh, I just replaced my laptop. I had it for like three years and, uh, I would say it, it was, it was getting slower. And my argument is they don't make them to last either. My no, screen yeah. was coming apart. Like, I, it's, Every, a, it's a, it's a scam. <laughs> the laptop looks great. It works fast. It's like, I'm having no issues in that respect. It's just today, right. this afternoon. It's just having a siesta, I guess. I hear you. So, well, let's yeah. go ahead and, and, and get it going. I, I don't have a trivia question for you guys today, but I did want to, you know, I think I might have run one poll since we started doing these webinars oh, yeah. back, in, back in October. I want to try this out. Um, so bear with me. Let's see if it works. So I'm going to run this poll, Jose. And the question is, do you currently utilize Stereocycle service for your medical waste management and compliance needs? So um, there's going to be some choices in there. I'm going to go ahead and launch it. Hopefully it works. <laughs> yep. Um, go ahead and put your answers in. I think I filled at least uh, if, you know, if it's not applicable to your organization, I think that is an option in there. Um, How do you so click it, Ray? Uh-oh, is it not clickable? Um, you should just be able to select the answer itself. Is there like a checkbox or anything next to it, or is or what if you just select the answer? I'm tr I'm clicking all over the place, but apparently, I'm, <laughs> I'm well, I'm getting answer. some responses, Jose. So yeah, so I, maybe I mean, it's yeah. maybe it's because you're a co-host, perhaps. 
I'm maybe. not sure. That may be what it is. Let's get some help from the uh, chat. Shelly, if you were <laughs> able to answer this, uh, was there like a button or a, a, a checkbox that you could click? Anyone? Click the circle. Are you getting a circle there, Jose? No circle. Huh. I'm just getting I'm just getting the question with the answers, the QR code, the end poll. I my, think it's my guess yeah. is you, you might just it might be because you're a panelist. So it's yeah. just uh, it's recognizing you as a as a user. Ooh. So all good. Right, we have a nice mix. Yeah, we do. It. We got a nice, yeah, very nice mix here. So no, good to know. And uh um now we're very excited about this topic. And uh, for those or let me go ahead and share a screen. I'm going to go ahead and close this out. Appreciate you guys participating in that. And let's go ahead and share a screen. Jose, let me know if you can see. Chat, just uh, throw an emoji in there when you can see screen. Sorry, it might take a yep. second. There awesome. We so, everyone, welcome to today's webinar. And... Uh, my name is Ray Walters. I am with Epi Compliance, and I will be your host for today's session. I'm also joined by my co-host, uh, Jose Jr. Uh, for those of you that are joining new, yes. Jose has over 20 years of experience in healthcare consulting and currently owns a mental telehealth clinic in St. Augustine, Florida. Yep. And uh, this is a rather different topic that we've covered. Uh, we recently interviewed... Um, one of our partners uh, who does uh, shredding services and um, this uh, particular topic that we're discussing today is the recent uh, uh, acquisition of Stereocycle. For those that are, don't know, that's, I would say, I would argue at this point, probably the largest med waste company here in the U.S., Jose. Um, or, yeah, or, probably. I mean, we're very close to it. Yeah, I don't, I'm off the top of my head. I'm not coming up with another brand. They were recently uh, acquired by Waste Management, and uh, we want to just talk about how that affects the industry as a whole, and uh, uh, in particular, smaller uh, medical waste company businesses and the challenges that they might uh, have to overcome as well. And I do have uh, a special guest. Uh, she's joining us today. Her name is Jess Dick. She is... Uh, the clinical operator for uh, another partner of our sterile way. I'll put their website here in chat. Um, but long story short, um, she was actually the one that uh, informed me. And this uh, this acquisition happened, I believe, somewhere around June 3rd, um, earlier this month. And uh, she actually was the first one to inform me of that. So I wanted to sort of get her on here and and have her sort of weigh in on on that situation. She works for a smaller uh, medical waste company. And Jess, uh, can you hear us okay? You got yourself muted, Jess. There we go. Yeah, can y'all hear me? Yeah. Hey, Jess, I got you now. How are you? Doing great. How about you guys? I'm trying to stay out of trouble, but it knows where I am most of the time. You know? <laughs> Key word. Jose's having internet issues too. It's all good. <laughs> I keep my fingers crossed for this. I don't know what hit, what happens after lunchtime, but it starts getting spotty in our area. So we'll see yeah. how it goes. Tell the uh, chat, Jess, uh, uh, what do you do for sterile sterile way, and where you know, obviously, where you guys are located. Um, so we are actually a local company in the upstate of South Carolina, uh, mostly in the Greenville, Spartanburg, Anderson area, um, but also. Um, going into like North Carolina, we covered Georgia and little parts of Tennessee, but we kind of pride ourselves on being the local entities here. We've got a lot of really good, uh, larger local setups that we really focus on and we just, you know, take it one day at a time. Um, but for me, so I, I essentially am the general manager for our company. I can handle all of our compliance. Mm -hmm. um, routeware, software, keeping up manifest. Um, there's a lot of specifics that go into it for state and federal DOTs. Uh, here we use South Carolina DHEC to keep us all up to date that we can do our guidelines by. So it's, uh, it's a lot of check marks. I had a handy dandy highlighter as my best friend for many years starting. <laughs> No, Jess, I appreciate that. And, uh, I, you know, I was doing a little more research in the med waste industry. It's it's very highly regulated from what I've seen. Oh, yeah. State, federal, um, all the above. 
And uh, I, I appreciate you. Uh, well, obviously, the recent acquisition of uh, Stericycle to waste management. Um, I was wondering if you could weigh in perhaps on, uh, you know, how's that how will that affect you guys um, in the in the longer scheme of things? Um, I'm, I'm kind of hoping it's going to benefit us. I mean, I feel mm -hmm. like sometimes, you know, there are some companies that get a little too big for the britches and, uh, <laughs> the smaller, um, well, they consider smaller, but for us, they're a, a good normal generator on a weekly basis. Sure. Uh, you know, when, when you get to a national level with things, uh, I'm curious to see how it's going to change. Um, I know we've got a lot of customers that are not too keen on waste management that they've dealt with in the past. And, you know, waste management has a lot of competitors too. You know, you've got Republic, Waste Connection, mm -hmm. Plain Harbor. So, you know, everybody's fighting to be that top dog out there. And I think with the the whole deal with waste management is, you know, they're trying to keep their shareholders happy and they have to continue to grow as they, as they can. And the medical waste industry was just kind of their next setup. Um, sure. But I think what a lot of people don't realize is, Along with Stericycle, um, Stericycle, you know, owns Treadit. So not only are waste management acquiring the medical waste, but they're also acquiring the shredding portion of this as well. Did not so, know that. Yeah. Did not so, know that. Um, yeah, Stericycle bought out Treadit years back. I think it was like for two point something billion dollars. And so uh, with this being bought out with the shredding and the medical waste, I think that's why you see that super high, you know, 7.2 billion. 7.2 billion. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Um, but I'm, I'm kind of curious to see what happens with some other ones because I don't know if y'all have ever heard of Curtis Bay before. Curtis Bay is uh, one that's more known in like the Baltimore mm -mm. area. They were a medical waste set up and they got fined a, a big hefty fine. Um, I think last year, beginning of this year for like a 1.75 million. So they've actually been bought up by another company called Sharps Compliance. And Do you happen to have any insight on the uh, the reasoning for that fine or that I, lawsuit? I do. I do. Yeah. Uh, so it was actually overloading. The, so everything that Curtis Bay does is through mm -hmm. their incinerator. Okay. And um, it actually came out that through their management was instructing them to basically overload the incinerator with more than it should have been. And everything wasn't being disposed of properly. And wow. I think when they went to, I mean, because by the time medical waste, your basic medical waste goes through all the sterilization and heating process. I mean, it does go to the landfill once it's been processed correctly. And I think that they were coming along with uh, larger portions than should have through an incineration process of it. I think so, that's how they got so, so let's take a quick step back on this, Jess. Um, I am a complete moron. When it comes to this subsection of the industry, um, just because honestly, it, there isn't much consulting needed on that end, and I don't have much uh, much experience on running something like this. All I would know as someone who's been in operations is I need to get rid of this stuff that I don't want to touch, and I have to talk to somebody specific about it because if I put it, if I'm caught putting it in the regular trash, there's going to be problems. So how can you do like a quick uh, how does that stuff actually get to the landfill the long way around, I guess? Yeah. So with this, um, and keep in mind, so we're, we're technically just a we're a transport company. So we don't have mm -hmm. our own treatment facility. We partner with the treatment facility where we take mm -hmm. everything. So there's a couple right. of different ways to dispose of medical waste. You have a rotoclave, which essentially you put the medical waste into and it spins it, heats it up, sterilizes it. And then ours, we take an extra step with ours and we shred everything at the end. So that way, just in case you've got, you know, a vial in there with the customer or patient information on, that's completely destroyed. Mm -hmm. um, there's another technique called an autoclave, which everything goes into this large container and it's, it's almost like, um, it's like a huge oven. Uh, it doesn't, it just essentially melts everything down, sterilizes it to the certain temperature, and then it's disposed of to the landfill that way. And then there's full incineration. So those are your three that you can do with the medical waste. But as far as picking up, I mean, of course, 
I, I don't open the containers. I don't want to know what's in there. So everything, <laughs> of course. There's, there's, don't get me wrong. There's some pretty raunchy smells that come from some of this stuff because I, you can yeah. kind of only imagine what all the medical waste is composed of. I mean, sure, of course, the leading things are your sharps. Um, and those are placed into sharps containers that are puncture resistant before they even go into our containers. Um, but then you also have anything that has um, blood, urine, feces. Um, if it has touched anything considered biohazard, it goes into that container. So we actually take a step further. Most companies utilize a cardboard box to place things into, and it has to have a, a red biohazard bag in it. Mm -hmm. um, we actually use reusable containers. So it's less that's going into the landfill with the cardboard. And so with our reusables, it's a thicker material than what you put your sharps into. And so it's almost like a, another secure setup for not only, you know, the customer having it at their location, there's not going to be any punctures through it, but also us as transporting it, it's just another layer of security for us not having anything come through. If there is something sharp in there that's not disposed of properly because, you know, broken glass also can get. Yeah, of course. So with that, so we, we have the biohazard bag, they fill it up, they tie the bag in their proper way, which there is a very specific way to do that through DHEC um, or state and federal setups. And so they- the, the Wait, I can't just loop, swoop, and pull, Jess? Well, it's not the bunny ears um, that we have to go by here. It's actually almost like a gooseneck. Like you have to- <laughs> a gooseneck. It's a one knot. <laughs> That's the only thing I can think of putting it is a gooseneck. <laughs> um, it's funny I, I didn't even know that didn't even know that it, it was down to a t you know in terms of tying the oh, bag yeah. off and all the above and obviously you said earlier uh there was a there's a weight thing as well involved you know you can't it sounded like these company or the company you mentioned earlier jess uh was coming with too much weight <laughs> so they were essentially trying to set trying to cut a corner sounds like yeah. Yes. So um, there, there's weight regulations set that's per containers. Um, there's weight set to how much you can dispose of through the treatment sites um, at each time that you go through it. Um, but uh, it, when it comes to the, the medical waste, it's just back to the previous. It is one of those that we, we don't touch anything. Everything is done before we get to it. So we are essentially just transporting from one place to the treat facility. And then once you get to the treat facility, they just pop open the lids and dump it into another container that dumps it into the, the treatment. So it's a very much hands-free from touching what's in there. Gotcha. Um, I tell you what, when you open those lids to some of them, you smell. No, <laughs> no, no, no. Just, we don't, we don't have a waste problem because anything that needs to be done in our mental health clinic the lab can do just go straight to the lab. I don't, I don't want any samples in the office. It's yeah. just, I don't know. We're not doing it. It doesn't make any sense for us to, you know, I don't want, I don't want the cost of the waste. I don't want the liability. I don't want to smell it. I was nope. going to say, I think that I, I worked for a, a weight loss clinic temporarily. And I mean, the only thing that we did there was just B12 injection. So, and that just went into the container. I, you know, obviously I never, put my nose in it you know but <laughs> i don't think well, it, i mean you know, there's other you know obviously other stuff you know going on but uh, about the biopsies can, that people yeah do, i can only right? imagine the, the other the you know, yeah all that stuff dermatologists i imagine are a great client for you jess oh yeah absolutely um i mean there there's been a couple of things here or there that i didn't realize went into waste until you really dive into it and with, yeah. when it comes to medical waste unless you go through that hundred something page that I had to read to come up with everything and, you know, get our compliance up to date with how it had to go. Um, you don't really know about it until you have to dive into it. I mean, of course you just hear, oh yeah, we're just gonna go pick up your medical waste. It's not that simple. There's very tedious things that have to be done. And the crazy thing is, is that it actually changes from state to state. Some states are mm -hmm. more specific, um, certain rules and, you know, guidelines have to go through. Uh, South Carolina is actually one of those that holds themselves to a lot higher standards. Um, like if I go into North Carolina, it's not as high standards that uh, the disposal has to come out of. Careful. Don't say that now. They might change that. North Carolina's, <laughs> North Carolina's changing quite a few things nowadays, right? So um, 
it so, kind of makes me wonder, you know, who screwed something up in South Carolina to make it that much more. <laughs> that's, that's, that's always my entertaining way of looking at a regulation, because if there's a law for it, it's because somebody did something they weren't supposed to do. And they're like, OK, I guess we can't use the, the rule of we're going to have common sense here. Let's, you know, let's itemize this out correctly. So, yeah, I mean, this um, normally I see on the provider side, especially when I when I start seeing the hospitals consolidate. One of the things I see is the providers pay gets goes up or the benefits get better because they're a larger organization. Um, you know, that monopolization of the of the mar free market a little mm -hmm. bit kind of kicks us in the teeth as a smaller as a smaller entity is that I guess that's not really something you need to worry about because you're more of a chauffeur, right? You're more of a transpo, so that wouldn't affect you as much and you don't have specialized equipment, right? Correct. So you're just throwing everything in the back of the truck and and just kind of going to wherever it is that you guys dispose or wherever your oven is, right? Yes. Well, and everything <laughs> that we do, keeping everything local to South Carolina. So our treatment that we we work with, um, it's actually one that, you know, we're, we're looking at moving forward in the future and becoming our own treatment facility, but we, we've been in business for a little over Maybe a little over how long, Jess, was that? I, I just, Jess just going just a little in and out. Not not sure if uh, if it's your That's connection. Right. That's all right. Is that better? A little bit. Tell you the, the, the Wi-Fi here is a hit or miss sometimes. There we go. You, uh, we there got you, go. you now. Got we got you now. We got okay. you now. Um, but no, we we really just pride us, ourselves on keeping everything local. So our our treat facility is only twenty minutes from our warehouse. Okay. So they they handle all the permits and everything on their side for their stuff. Um, and of course, you know, there's going to be talks in the future about becoming one larger setup. So it's not separate companies and yep. vertical um, integration. Exactly. And so, of course, that comes with we, we have a local company we use as well, too, for all of our hazardous stuff, because medical waste has the biohazard, which is the yep. more simplified setup. And then, of course, there's the hazardous waste, um, which is a whole different ball field. Yes, yes, it's uh, it's it's extremely different. But when you're a smaller company like you guys are, or I guess not smaller, but regional company like you guys are, um, I'm guessing that you're going to have a different price based on location of a client, right? Like, so if it's, if it's same size client in your backyard in South Carolina, it's going to be different than some places in Georgia or North Carolina because of the, it would be a price fluctuation because of the location issue where they drive everything to your, your partner here in South Carolina, or would it be something more based on the regulations of the state or jurisdiction that the practice finds itself? So there, there would be a small price set up with it. Um, we're already, we've already got a few customers in those locations. And so it's really just about building that up and making it a, a better route for us. Um, so we didn't start going into those other states until we, we actually had, you know, a decent amount to make it worth our while. Absolutely. But as far as they, our, our customers cannot bring their just kind of going in and out again. Oh, how about it's it's weird. Yeah. I can hear yeah, you, but no. it's like it's kind of muffled. But yeah, I hear you. We got you now. We got you now. <laughs> um, but uh, but I, our customers are not actually legally allowed to bring the medical waste to us because there has to be decals all over the vehicles. You have to have uh. DO setups and everything like that. So it's actually us picking it up from them at their physical locations. Gotcha. Okay. So how far, um, just so that way anybody that sees this either now or later on down the road, how far out in that Tennessee, North Carolina, Georgia area are you going to? You going like as far south as Atlanta? Or I we guess do. southwest to you, right? Yeah, Atlanta is only about two hours from us. So that's that's not too much of a, you know, hop, skip and a jump away. So um, Atlanta, Tennessee, it, we have an on-call customer that's over there. That majority of their bases are here in South Carolina. So that's really like a once every six months. 
Um, but oh. we did have to get permitted for that state in order to go into it. Um, <laughs> we already spent the money on it. Makes Tennessee, sense. here we go. Here we yeah, go. exactly. Um, but a lot of the customers that we have here is only because the, the surrounding states, well, of course, North Carolina. North Carolina is only 45 minutes from where we are here. Oh, um, okay. so it's it's not that bad. We've, we've got a good little setup going on more so in the Asheville area. That's that's pretty close. And then uh, anywhere uh, in South Carolina, we've got a few customers along the coastline in like the Myrtle Beach, Charleston area. And then um, we go, like I said, Atlanta, really not too far past Atlanta and the Georgia. Yeah. OK, all right. I have a so question if, for you. Or go ahead. Go, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, I'm. we're here in North Florida. If we were looking for some uh, services like yours, are you the kind of company that has other regional players that you guys kick stuff back and forth to, or is it something more that we just put in on um, in any of our search engines that we enjoy, whether it's Google or DuckDuckGo or whatever the case may be, um, uh, waste management, and we go, we just go and find it, or hazardous uh, bio waste, you know, whatever the case may be. Uh, how, how would somebody go about finding something more local if we didn't want to go that national route? Yeah, I would definitely say that if you know somebody in the in the field, it's best to ask them because we, we go to medical conferences. We we do meet other companies like ourselves that are in different areas. And so that that's a plus. If we can help push that local setup along to anybody else. I mean, we're a local company. We we love local local businesses. Um, but if anything else, I mean you can search through your website, but a lot of what you're going to find, if you do through a, you know, a Google search or something like that, you're going to find your national companies that pop up. Yeah. It's going to be the Stericycle and Sharps. And so, I mean, I, I would definitely say if you're looking for a local entity and you know somebody within the field, it doesn't hurt to ask. Okay. So, so anybody watching this could reach out to you guys by checking out your website or anything like that. And you guys can kick them to the proper regional player that you guys know. Absolutely. Cool, cool, cool. So, Array, I put, you, I put your website, uh, uh, Jess, in the uh, chat just a little earlier. I'll do it again. Um, what we'll look to do as well, we'll send out your contact information uh, post post webinar so that our attendees have that uh, if they need to get in touch with you. Oh yeah. Ray, what and question did you have though? Yeah. So, um. You kind of you kind of harped on it earlier when you were talking about regional versus sort of the larger players in the industry like Stereocycle, right? Um, you know how can smaller uh, players sort of effectively uh, differentiate themselves in the market um, as compared to somebody like Stereocycle? You know who you mentioned earlier, Jess. I like I said didn't realize that they bought the Medways, but they also do the shredding side, right? So they're they are sort of glomming on a multitude of services. So how, how can small players sort of keep up with that trend? Um, so I would honestly, networking um, has been one of my best entities here, uh, just doing local stuff. Also, honestly, keep showing up. Um, a lot of what we still have to do is cold calls. A lot of people don't know how to look for those local entities. And so you never know when somebody's going to, you know, start having problems with one of their current setups. And so, you know, it is one of those, don't get to the point where, you know, you're nagging somebody, but, you know, just, just keep showing up, ask for who you need to speak with or how you can help, or, you know, even just that follow-up email. It's like, Hey, I know we talked, you know, six months ago, just wanted to check back in. Would love to talk with you, see how we can help. But I know one of our biggest setups is the the cost effectiveness on our side. You know, we're our, our customers are right in our backyard. It's not something sure. that they have to wait a, a week from now, two weeks from now when there's a truck in the area. So really harping on that we are local. And when they see our faces and see those emails, it, it just kind of puts us back in that life from. So funny. is there a subsection of the industry that you would say, because, I mean, everybody knows about, you know, waste and, and bio waste and all that fun stuff. And I know that a lot of the healthcare industry looks at it as a cost of doing business, right? So, but are there subspecialties that don't really use your services that could benefit? 
You know what I mean? Um, like, he, some would, okay, one I never thought about were schools. I never thought that schools would be a customer for us. But when oh, you think about it, yeah. Well, the nurses. Uh, but also keep in mind, so we we started our our sister company that's been going for almost 20 years now is a document shredding company. But we already have a great customer basis that are, you know, the two owners have built up mm -hmm. you know, for quite some time. And so it's been really good them already knowing how our customer service works and how we uphold ourselves as far as, you know, our employees go and how we run things, that it's easy to transition from our shredding into the medical waste for it. Mm -hmm. um, so that's how we actually got started as Sterile Away is because we had some of our customers saying, hey, you know, you should really check this out. You know, if, they, if this national company can do it, you know, maybe y'all can do it on a smaller level. And that's, that's how we started looking into it. We had customers that started reaching out and they're just like, we're tired of the, the national setups. We're tired of being left behind or not thought about because we are not a large generator. Um, mm -hmm. And so it, that, that honestly helped us is already having those dermatologies, the schools, the labs that we do shredding for and storage. And now it just kind of helps, you know, roll into the medical waste part of it. Interesting. So it's really more of a, when you go someplace, it's more of a pitch on, why us, not why this service, which is nice because it's just the one barrier rather than the double barrier of this is why you need this service, but this is also why us. Um, I had something to add. You mentioned uh, just cost effectiveness and I couldn't help. I found this uh, article. I put it in chat um, just a second ago. It was uh, back in 2017, Stericycle, they got a uh, class action lawsuit because um, they are essentially uh, overcharging their customers, uh, essentially without their consent. Uh, I guess their whatever contract that they signed, the price just kept going up and up and up. And wow. actually, they got called out for it. So I'm curious uh, if that's like industry standard, where you know you're a med waste company, you sort of you lock your client into those types of contracts, or is there different ways to go about it, or? Um, I thought it was, I thought it was interesting and, and, you know, a, a lot of our customers are healthcare, uh, um, organizations and, you know, I hear mixed, I hear mixed feelings, uh, about the, uh, stereocycle. Some good, I'd say more, more, more over bad than the others, <laughs> more, well, more bad reviews. No, but, uh, exactly what you're touching base on has definitely been um, helping for us because I mean we actually put in our contracts with our customers we don't put them in a five-year contract you know we let our services speak for themselves I mean majority of what we do you know a year two year what they're comfortable with just to make sure that we keep that regular service going and also we have in our contracts that our pricing is set for what we set you as you're it's never mm -hmm. going to increase as long as you're a customer with ours um, I have seen some customers contracts with other um, entities and it actually does have a clause in there saying that you know these national companies can increase mm -hmm. or whatever they want so that they tie they it to inflation they tie it to gas prices they tie it to weight they tie it to all kinds it's, of it's probably in very small fine print uh -huh. on the 50 page document that you know they send <laughs> over to you <laughs> And yeah, it's, it's crazy. I, yeah. Like I said, this article, uh, I, I just found it. I haven't really read through the entire thing. It was back in November, 2017, but yeah, pretty crazy lawsuit. And uh, I've heard feedback from that, you know, these customers have been locked in and these contracts, they can't get out of it and their price have gone up and they're not happy is the bottom line, you know? Well, and another one that actually comes along with uh, with yours, Ray, is um, I've heard a lot of customers talk about how they're getting charged automatically for compliance training through Stericycle, and they're not even receiving the compliance through them. I was waiting on you to bring that up. Uh <laughs> <laughs> uh, what well, compliance yeah. does the Stericycle offer? Just the, I assume, just waste from... Jess, you might be able to weigh in better than, than myself, but I, as far as I know, and this is just from talking to customers that use utilize Stericycle, they have some sort of OSHA component. Not so much yeah. sure about the HIPAA side of things, but they provide basic training on OSHA. They do policies, procedures, but a lot of it, from what I've gathered, is just related to medical waste, 
which yeah. is really just a subsection of OSHA. There's much yeah. more, uh, much more than that, you know, and there's like a, a strong, uh, just this the, tendency, you know, they think, you know, I'm doing this training through stereocycle, you know, I'm, I'm OSHA compliant, but that's not always the case. You know what I mean? So more product, yes, I don't know. Training. More product training than actual training. Exactly. Don't put the needles in the bags. Keep the needles in the container. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I, I think I think one of the biggest things where I like with our side of the company is that each person through EPI has their own login. They get their own certificate. Whereas what I've heard from um, my my customers we've ever taken from the stereocycle point that it's essentially a training, and the customer prints off their own piece of paper and says these people went through the training which I'm not sure how much that really holds up if there was ever an audit that comes with it. Mm -hmm. So uh, Jose, um, you might, but, you might know. <laughs> so I mean, Probably the not. problem is if, if you get an OSHA audit, right. And in my experience, if OSHA's coming through, it's more because of an issue that's popped up rather than OSHA walking around doing random audits. However, it is, it isn't unheard of that they'll do it. And when they have come through, if you've got your stuff in a row, they won't bother. It'll be in and out, you're out the door, or you're, you're, everything's good to go. But if they find something, they're going to be a tick and just be there every year, right up your case, trying to figure out, you know, what's going on there. Um, so it's, it's rather interesting. I wonder if they've looked at the curriculum, because I know, Ray, you've had a couple emails with some clients during audits and the auditors specifically asking for Hey, what are the topics that are covered? You know, just to make sure that everything is right. covered, not just a product specific or. Uh, well, the interesting specific. thing about the stereocycle, I don't know what those, obviously it's a single certificate. It might have all the users that participated, whatnot, mm -hmm. but I'm wondering if it lists out the actual topics that are covered, you know, our, our certificates. Uh, and again, with our OSHA training, it's very generalized. It's for all healthcare. You know, needle sticks, bloodborne pathogens, the med waste, et cetera. Yep. Um, and our certificates, as Jess mentioned, it's more self guided, self paced. Uh, each user has a login to their profile on our system and they can log in at their convenience or if they were directed by their compliance officer, hey, you got to complete this in this window of time. <laughs> Um, but it's like I said, you can, it's very self-paced, self-guided, and um, each user gets a certificate with their first last name issued, and it does list out all the topics that were covered. And oh. from what I found, you know, from our customers that have been inspected, it definitely holds a little more weight. And ultimately, when you're trying to gather all your employees to do the training at once, I, I just don't see, especially a larger organization, how do you make that happen? You know, it, it, People are going to be on vacation, or you know, yeah, you're yeah. never going to you're never new gonna, people versus fired people. Or you're never going to round everybody up at once. Uh, yeah, and like I said, a solution like Epi Compliance, where you you can yeah. take it at your leisure, it's just it's a little more simpler to to manage. And as far as the compliance officer is concerned, it's all in front of them. You know, um, they can go in and see if Susie has done the training or not, et cetera. And it's really good for new hires. You know, and that's another thing. If you're doing all the trainings at once and then you get, you get a, a, a grand, a brand new group of new hires, how do you do it? You know, are you, yeah. so. Uh, yeah, Shelly, I'm seeing what you got here, what you, what you wrote here. And you're, you're absolutely right. Like that. I like to call that whenever it's, um whenever it's product specific or service specific, it's, I don't call it like actual training on mm -hmm. the regulations. It's more on how do I use this product so I don't hurt myself or cause higher liability for my vendor. Uh, so, I mean, ADP's got one for in regards to um, payroll, but that doesn't cover nearly as much as it needs to for everything. And I choose, a, I choose ADP because that's the one I always hear about that. Or you have the Nazi compliance officer. <laughs> I think Shelly would like our system. <laughs> Shelly, it it's not that you're a Nazi. It's <laughs> that you 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 probably look good in an orange shirt, but not an orange jumpsuit. That's all. And that's perfectly fine, you know? And and there always has to be that one person, right? And I'm, it sounds like Jess is that one person at her office because if she actually read through the whole 100 pages, then, you know... I, I'm I'm surprised because most people don't read the Listen, other, anything other than the first 
uh, the first paragraph and last paragraph, right, Jess? She Shelly's in the, uh, she's in the top uh, percentile because most of the uh, <laughs> customers I talk with, nobody wants to bear the compliance officer name. <laughs> they don't want to put their name on it. It does, it does require <laughs> a special person. It, it does really require does. a special person. But no, yeah. so... Go ahead, I, will, I will contest to what Shelly said here. That's actually a step that we do ourselves in asking who can sign the manifest mm -hmm. because not, you know, the, the clerk up front more than likely is not going to have that OSHA blood board pathogen set up that, you know, the, the back of the house requires. So uh, yep. it is something that that is one thing we ask before we even acquire a signature if our normal person's not there. Because yeah. then not only does that help cover you know our butts but also covers our customers in that long run so i feel like it's just an extra that that's an added bonus with our customers see, with us cya is huge now with how litigious everybody is and how fundraising our governments seem to be at both state and federal so no i uh hey this has been this has been definitely eye-opening i didn't know that there was that much to it honestly and i mean I didn't even think about, you know, the, the schools and I mean, shoot, probably daycares even, right? Um, come up with all kinds of bio waste over there if they still got diapers running around. That's a lot of snot noses, but I don't think the, the <laughs> snot nose rags really go too much into the <laughs> hazard. But um, a lot of times it, there's also a thing that a small generator, technically you can dispose of it yourself. There's ways to do it. So we, we do have some smaller ones that do handle that on their own. Huh. A small generator. Like now, uh, now you got now you've got me intrigued, Jess. Is this something that I my her part of my hurricane prep can now be part of my waste management? I mean, as long as it's <laughs> 49 pounds and less, I mean, you're considered a small gen and that's in a month time. If you generate 49 pounds or less, you are considered a small generator and you can dispose of it yourself through certain kits or even yeah. I don't know. Shoot, I, I, see, you you learn something new every day, right? It's not a waste. Is that a uh, is that federal or does that depend on the state in terms of the weight? Is that uh, a um I, I think that's South Carolina. I think that's gotcha. South Carolina. God, I feel like I feel like Florida is less. I, I I I don't and the reason why I say that when I work for the weight loss clinic, and you know, ironically we use stereocycle. So uh, but I remember when they picked up the each month, it was like it had to be less than 25 pounds or something. I don't know. I'm gonna look into it I'm, just because I'm curious. <laughs> well, now the weight may be attributed to the price, Ray. I maybe well, that's it. That more than the regulation. Maybe that's what um, it is. Some companies will do it based off of how much the container weighs. We do it cost per container. You put whatever you want in this, this is how much it costs per container. But gotcha. you have to stay underneath a certain weight for that container size. But um, man, this sounds like flying. If, if your <laughs> bag does not fit in this thing, it's getting checked. Give me my twenty five dollars. Give me my twenty five bucks. You're done. Just, just fill up another container and we'll. <laughs> no, one. it'll fit, Jess. It'll fit. Just relax, all right. Just and give that's me five minutes. Provider starts get it in corners. There. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. I feel bad for your drivers if they have if they have clients like me that I would just do it just to mess with them just to see you know what they would say. Oh well, it's 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 it, I'm telling you if y'all just want some good reading material, just go to South Carolina DHEC, and uh, there's about a hundred and something pages on there. You're going now, in and is, out again, Jess. Now, but Jess, I hear this you. is good material for for what falling asleep or for for laughing. <laughs> is this the um, is this the no no list or is this the regulations? This this is regulation. Oh, okay. So if I can't fall asleep, got it. This is the do's and the don'ts. Got it. Okay. Okay. So everybody, well, I'll be sure to have a, I'll be sure to have a, a drink before I take a look at that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, that's funny. That's 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 some good stuff though. That's some good stuff. So, Jess, I mean. <sighs> Is there something in the industry that you think is going to be new and emerging? Like, because there's always something in these subsections that I always like to see, like look around the corner, not just immediately 10 feet in front of us, right? Like driving a car. Um, is there anything like that in, in your subsection, subsection of the industry? 
Um, not, not currently. Um, I know there are some new ways of disposal that are coming about, some that we've checked into, but they haven't quite made it to the states yet. Um, and it's how to dispose of the waste in a more energy efficient way with as little um, remnants in, uh, as possible. Mm -hmm. So there's there's some stuff going on right now. Um, it, it's essentially similar to a incinerator, except it turns around and generates enough power to run the entire warehouse that it, it contains. So, gotcha. so it's sustainable. Exactly. Exactly. So I think that's something that's going to start slowly moving this way. The only problem is here in the state, uh, a lot of the federal regulations are not allowing incinerator type stuff going on anymore. Incinerators are pretty much are done. Um, unless you already have an incinerator, mm -hmm. you are not getting a permit. They're getting um, grandfathered. Got it. And I, I'm, I'm basically, because that was something that we started looking into as becoming our own because incineration has the least amount coming out at the end versus mm -hmm. the rotoclave and autoclave. And so that's with us being a, a green company on our shredding side, we tried to, you know, recycle as much as possible and have as little go into the landfill. But with the uh, medical waste, it's it's kind of, you know, touch and go right now with it. So let me ask a stupid question. Mortuaries. A lot of them have incinerators attached to them because, you know, cremation is a thing now. Wouldn't that be an option as well? You know, you, <laughs> you would think, and uh, we actually have some shredding customers as mortuaries. And they get on a complete different setup than we do. So they can dispose of the bodies in that way, but not medical waste. So they can't, I mean, it's. So it's, is it like a licensing, licensing thing or just completely different type of incinerator? All I mean, it's, Ray, it's, I guess it's a different kind of fire. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, another one you don't think about are, are how they incinerate, you know, animals. So yeah. a vet clinic can sit here and give, you know, animal remains to their incinerator, but not their medical waste. It's two completely different fields because of what's being disposed of. I'm, I'm, I haven't dug into the details of what like a mortuary has to do as far as disposing of everything. But yes, essentially it is exactly the same, exactly the same. Because I imagine the temps have to be similar, you know, yep. all that stuff is... It's just time based at that point, right? You know, what are we yeah. incinerating here? But you know, we we it would be way too easy if you if you made it. At all it like yeah, every practice just has their own incinerator. Damn <laughs> common <laughs> sense as again. As possible. Yeah, damn common sense again, rearing its ugly head. I apologize, guys. Yeah, Jess would be working for us at that point. <laughs> <laughs> Well, shoot, Jess. I mean, this has been this has been I, seriously. I I've learned a lot from you today in this forty five minutes. So I mean, um, how can everybody get a hold of you? You got do you guys have uh, socials for your marketing as well, or is it just the website and the phone number? Just just the website for now. Um, I believe my email might be attached to that. But I'll put your email in, in the chat, Jess. No worries. Okay. Great. Um, yeah, and that my contact information as well that's probably fine um as far as you know other states outside of south carolina like i said we do have a couple of states we've got some connections with if that's something you know we can help out more than happy to um if not you know uh, i can definitely look at a few in your area and tell you you know the yays and nays by looking at some website that would be a little bit more specific if you're looking for a good local local entity yeah i mean i always look at it as i want three as a consultant, I always like to give three and three vendors when somebody asks me a question about it. So that way they can pick. I don't want you picking the one, the only one I give you, because if there's a problem, it blows up in my face. I'm going to give you three if I can. So that way you pick and I'll work with whoever. There you go. Yeah, that's fair. You know? <laughs> that's fair. One thing I'll, I'll, I'll end on, you know, Jess, you've been with us for how long now? A couple years? Yeah. Yeah. A little over um, two. You know, that's a, certainly a benefit uh, of being a smaller player, you know, partnering with organizations that uh, essentially provide more value to your customers, you know, and ultimately it, 
it might drive to close a deal as well. Um, like, like I mentioned earlier, Stericycle, they do the OSHA, they have a compliance component, you know, but does it truly cover everything that you need or is it really just, again, just med waste related? And uh, we do it all, you know, OSHA, HIPAA, Medicare, and, uh, you know, partnering with organizations, I, I think uh, will set the smaller player apart as well in an industry like yours. Interesting. Absolutely. So, Ray, what do we have coming up next week? Well, let's uh, let's open up. Uh, if anybody has any questions real quick, we'll just take the next 30 seconds to address. Uh, I do have an anonymous uh, question here. What resources are available to help medical waste companies navigate the change changing compliance landscape? I have an answer, but it's not one that most people are going to like have a healthcare attorney <laughs> always if you don't have a healthcare attorney and you're in the healthcare industry you need to have a relationship with them even if it's on an ad hoc basis having one of those is it, it's the easiest way to stay in 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 the loop because the para, they'll find something that the legislation passes or legislation changes like you can't you can't have an oven that will bear, will incinerate people, but not waste, um, <laughs> or apparently vice versa, right, Jess? So <laughs> you know, but if something like that changes, a lawyer is always going to have his paralegal send out the notification to all of the clients. So that's one that I always like to. Um, for that, I would I would say. I mean, Jess, do you have any other any tips or tricks that you've got? I will say if you find out kind of who handles the medical waste in your state, uh, sometimes it's EPA, sometimes it's um, like here we have DHEC, whatever it's called specifically in your state. I think there actually might be something you can sign up for just to kind of get like some newsletters. Newsletter. Yeah. So if there ever is anything, and I think you can do it a little bit more specific to the um, type of waste or whatever. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Makes oh. sense. Well, no, I, I I think that's uh, I think that clears it up. Uh, hopefully, that answered uh, this uh, person's question. I don't see any other questions rolling through. So, uh, next week uh, we are going to be talking with Dr. Delgado again. For those of you that might have been on the webinar last month, uh, we did uh, did have Dr. Delgado, uh, um, who is the CEO of Epi Compliance, and uh, he. Sort of just uh, we did a we did an introduction, uh, introduced them to the the webinar. This time we're going to be talking about uh, MIPS audit attestation. Um, so he's going to be weighing in on that. Uh, looking forward to it. I am going to put the uh, event bright in here. Uh, <clears throat> I'm not asking you guys to register, but if you guys just want to read up on the event, you guys will be uh, receiving uh, correspondence uh, with a new registration link uh, tomorrow. Um, but just so you guys have that in your back pocket, or if you want to share it with somebody, please do. Um, but now we're looking forward to that, that discussion. Um, somebody chime in one more question or was I just seeing something? <laughs> I just see the one. No, I, I mean, it might've, it might've been the emojis that were coming through. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh. Well, Jess, I, I appreciate your time, and uh, it, it, I'm glad that the internet the internet uh, held intact for you. <laughs> yeah, thanks for having me. I appreciate. it. I hope it wasn't too, you know. No, nah, I, I learned a lot. I learned a lot. <laughs> I mean, I I did not think it was going to be as entertaining as it was. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> like I said, unless unless you're in the field and or you are one that um, actually produces biohazard and you understand kind of what it is and what it comes from i mean i didn't know biohazard before i got into this thing are you kidding me i mean who goes <laughs> and just about that for fun wait <laughs> that's not what you want to do since kindergarten you know man i tell you I, I say the same thing about compliance until we are uh, the practice i work for got inspected and then i was intrigued at that point so <laughs> every, <laughs> otherwise i never would have guessed i'd be i would have been working in compliance so <laughs> we all have a I have a similar, uh, <laughs> like you, Jose, how'd you, how'd you get in healthcare consulting? Was that a uh, life dream of yours? <laughs> no, it was, it's the family business. Yeah. Dr. Gatto started Dr. it Delgado. when he got out of the air force and then I pretty much grew up in it. 
So, yeah. I mean, it was something to where I just kind of cut my teeth in early and often. And so, I mean, I got to spend time with him, make a little bit of money while I was in high school and college and all that fun stuff. And I found that I was pretty good at certain things, like uh, the find, finding the loopholes, right? So that's why I was asking about the mortuary thing, because they won't let you build any new incinerators. Screw it. Mortuary goes out of business. I'm buying that oven. <laughs> We're, we're definitely keeping our eyes out. <laughs> we're, waiting, <laughs> we're waiting for, wait, I know there's some stuff in Atlanta right now where they're about to start splitting DHEC up into a couple of different new entities because right now they're saying in South Carolina, DHEC just has a little too much that they're trying to handle all at once. So they're going to start breaking that up. So I'm curious to see the different things that come along with it. Yeah, God, I wish they would do that with ACA here in Florida. Uh, what is called in Florida? Okay. No, no, no. Aka is um the Medicaid. Basically, it's the Medicaid department for for Florida. They just do all kinds. They do way too much, and they do it all wrong. So the next time you talk to me, I might be you know sterile away slash body removal. I mean, you know, <laughs> <laughs> Jess, you sound like somebody's gonna be working with Dexter. All right, you need, okay. to, you need to relax here. <laughs> We work with she's gonna have John Wick on speed dial, you know. <laughs> gotta gotta handle some business. But uh talk <laughs> about the differentiating yourself from the larger players. There we go. <laughs> it's an untapped market, Jess, I'm sure. Uh it's, it's a world of possibilities. <laughs> perfect, perfect. But well, hey, everyone, I, I appreciate everyone's uh, participation. Uh we had some great engagement today. Uh, look forward to seeing everybody on uh, next uh, week's session. As I mentioned, there will be a registration link uh, going out tomorrow. Uh, so just be on the lookout for that. And obviously, we did record this uh, session. Um, usually, it's about a 48-hour turnaround before we get this video up. So just uh, stay tuned. But in the meantime, if you guys want to check out some uh, earlier episodes, I did put our YouTube channel there in the link. Uh, please feel free to subscribe. And uh, like I said, we've been doing these webinars since October of last year. We got quite a few topics that we've discussed thus far. So it's only going to keep growing. If you guys have any other topics that you would like us to discuss, feel free to send us a message or chime in in the chat. We're always looking for, well, new things to discuss. Um, yep. I, and, I think uh, I've got one for that that week you're playing hooky, but I gotta I gotta follow up with somebody. Oh, you want to do a webinar while I'm out of town? I mean, why skip right. a week? Yeah, no. Just because you ain't gonna be here doesn't mean we don't do it. I am gonna be out of town the uh, second week of July, the second Tuesday of July. So um I was planning on not hosting anything, but if Jose it sounds like you just volunteered, so we'll keep yeah. we'll keep the train going. Yep, yep. While I'm out. So Awesome. Well, uh, Jose, Jess, appreciate your time and uh, we'll talk soon. Thank you yep. everybody else for joining today. Thank, Thank you, Shelly. Thanks. Y'all take care. You as well.